third hole two scattering. For high altitude nuclear explosions, these electrons are captured in the Earth's magnetic field at altitudes between 20 and 40 kilometers where they interact with the Earth's magnetic field to produce a coherent nuclear electromagnetic pulse, known, which lasts about one millisecond. Secondary effects may last for more than a second. The pulse is powerful enough to cause moderately long metal objects, such as cables, to act as antennas and generate high voltages due to interactions with the electromagnetic pulse. These voltages can destroy any shielded electronics. There are no known biological effects of EMP. The ionized air also disrupts radiotrophic that would normally bounce off the ionosphere. Electronics can be shielded by wrapping them completely in conductive materials such as metal foil. The effectiveness of the shielding may be less than perfect. Proper shielding is a complex subject due to the large number of variables involved. Semiconductors, especially integrated circuits, are extremely susceptible to the effects of EMP due to the close proximity of the PN junctions. But this is not the case with thermionic tubes, or valves, which are relatively immune to EMP. A Faraday cage does not offer protection from the effects of EMP unless the mesh is designed to have holes no bigger than the smallest wavelength emitted from a nuclear explosion. Large nuclear weapons detonated at high altitudes also cause geomagnetically induced current in very long electrical conductors. The mechanism by which these geomagnetically induced currents are generated is entirely different from the gamma ray induced pulse produced by Compton electrons. Radar blackout. The heat of the explosion causes air in the vicinity to become ionized, creating the fireball. The free electrons in the fireball affect radio waves, especially at lower frequencies. This causes a large area of fesky to become opaque to radar, especially those operating in the VHF and UHF frequencies, which is common for long-range early warning radars. The effect is less for higher frequencies in the microwave engine, as well as lasting a shorter time the effect falls off both in strength and the affected frequencies as fireball cools and the electrons begin to reform on two free nuclei. 20. A second blackout effect is caused by the emission of beta particles from the fission products. These can travel long distances, following the Earth's magnetic field lines. When they reach the upper atmosphere they cause ionization similar to the fireball, but over a wider area. Calculations demonstrate that one megaton of fission, typical of a two megaton H-bomb, will create enough beta radiation to black out an area 400 kilometers, 250 me, across for 5 minutes. Careful selection of the burst altitudes and locations can produce an extremely effective radar blanking effect. 20. The physical effects giving rise to blackouts are those that also cause EMP, which itself can cause power blackouts. The two effects are otherwise unrelated, and the similar naming can be confusing. Ionizing radiation. About 5% of the energy released in a nuclear air burst is in the form of ionizing radiation, neutrons, gamma rays, alpha particles, and electrons moving at speeds up to the speed of light. Gamma rays are high energy electromagnetic radiation, the others are particles that move slower than light. The neutrons result almost exclusively from the fission and fusion reactions, while the initial gamma radiation includes that arising from these reactions as well as that resulting from the decay of short-lived fission products. The intensity of initial nuclear radiation decreases rapidly with distance from the point of burst because the radiation spreads over a larger area as it travels away from the explosion, the inverse square law. 
It is also juiced by atmospheric absorption and scattering. The character of the radiation received at a given location also varies with the distance from P equation. 21. Near the point of the explosion, the neutron intensity is greater than the gamma intensity. Due to its increasing distance, the neutron gamma ratio decreases. Ultimately, the neutron component of the initial radiation becomes negligible in comparison with the gamma component. The range for significant levels of initial radiation does not increase markedly with weapon yield and, as a result, the initial radiation becomes less of a hazard with increasing yield. With larger weapons, above 50 kT, 200 TJ, Blast and thermal effects are so much greater in importance that prompt radiation effects can be ignored. The neutron radiation serves to transmute the surrounding matter, often rendering it radioactive. When added to the dust of radioactive material released by the bomb itself, a large amount of radioactive material is released into the environment. This form of radioactive contamination is known as nuclear fallout and poses the primary risk of exposure to ionizing radiation for a large nuclear weapon. Details of nuclear weapon design also affect neutron emission. The gun type assembly Hiroshima bomb leaked far more neutrons than the implosion type 21 kT Nagasaki bomb because the light hydrogen nuclei, protons, predominating in the exploded TNT molecules surrounding the core of the Nagasaki bomb, slowed down neutrons very efficiently while the heavier iron atoms in the steel nose forging of the Hiroshima bomb scattered neutrons without absorbing much neutron energy. 22. It was found in early experimentation that normally most of the neutrons released in the cascading chain reaction of the fission bomb are absorbed by the bomb case. Building a bomb case of materials were transmitted rather than absorbed the neutrons could make the bomb more intensely lethal to humans from prompt neutron radiation. This is one of the features used in the development of the neutron bomb. Earthquake. The seismic pressure waves created from an explosion may release stress within nearby plates or otherwise cause an earthquake event. An underground explosion concentrates this pressure wave and a localized earthquake event is more probable. These waves, the first and fastest wave, equivalent to a normal earthquake's P wave can inform the location of the test. 23. The S wave and the Rayleigh wave follow. This here can all be measured in most circumstances by seismic station across the globe and comparisons with actually earthquakes can be used to help determine estimated yield via differential analysis by the modeling of the high frequency and GT4HZ teleseismic P wave amplitudes dot 24, 25, 26, however theory does not suggest that a nuclear explosion of current yields could trigger fault rupture and cause a major quake at distances beyond a few tens of kilometers from the shot point. 27. Summary of the effects. The following table summarizes the most important effects of single nuclear explosions under ideal, clear skis, weather conditions. Tables like these are calculated from nuclear weapons effects scaling laws. 28, 29, 30, 31, advanced computer modeling of real world conditions and how they impact on the damage to modern urban areas has found that most scaling laws are too simplistic and tend to overestimate nuclear explosion effects. As it is only simplistic and unclassified scaling laws that are commonly encountered, that do not take important things like varying land topography into account to ease calculation time and equation length. The scaling laws that were used to produce the table below, assume among other things, a perfectly level target area, no attenuating effects from urban terrain masking, for example skyscraper shadowing and no enhancement effects from reflections and tunneling by city streets. 
32, as a point of comparison in the chart below, the most likely nuclear weapons to be used against counter-value city targets in a global nuclear war are in the submegator range. Weapons of yields from 100 to 475 kilotons have become the most numerous in the US and Russian nuclear arsenals, for example, the warheads equipping Russian Gulaba submarine launched ballistic missile, SLBM, have a yield of 150 kilotons. 33 use examples are the W76 and W88 warheads, with the lower yield W76 being over twice as numerous as U88 in the US nuclear arsenal. Effects explosive yield forward slash height of burst 1 kt forward slash 200 m 20 kt forward slash 540 m 1 mount forward slash 2.0 km 20 mount forward slash 5.4 km blast effective ground range gr forward slash km urban areas completely level. 20 Psi or 140K par, 0.20.62.46.4 Destruction of most civilian buildings, 5 Psi or 34K par, 0.61.76.217 Moderate damage to civilian buildings, 1 Psi or 6.9K par, 1.74.71747 Railway cars thrown from tracks and crushed, 62K par, Values for other than 20 kT are really extrapolated using the cube root scaling, almost equal to 0.41.0, almost equal to 4, almost equal to 10 thermal radiation effective ground range GR forward slash. Kilometer fourth degree burns. Conflagration 0.52.010330 third degree burns 0.62.51238 second degree burns 0.83.21544 first degree burns 1.14.21953 effects of instant nuclear radiation effective slant range 1 SR forward slash kilometer lethal 2 total dose neutrons and gamma rays 0.81.42.34.7 Total dose for acute radiation syndrome 21.21.82.95.4 one for the direct radiation effects the slant range instead of the ground range is shown here because some effects are not given even at ground zero for some burst heights. If the effect occurs at ground zero the ground range can be derived from slant range and burst altitude. Pythagorean theorem. Dot two acute radiation syndrome corresponds here to a total dose of one gray, lethal to ten grays. This is only a rough estimate since biological conditions are neglected here. Dot further complicating matters under global nuclear war scenarios with conditions similar to that during the Cold War, major strategically important cities, like Moscow, and Washington are likely to be hit not once but numerous times from submegating multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, in a cluster bomb or cookie cutter configuration. 34. It has been reported that during the height of the Cold War in the 1970s Moscow was targeted by up to 60 warheads. 35. The reasons that the cluster bomb concept is preferable in the targeting of cities is twofold. The first is down to the fact that large singular warheads are much easier to neutralize as both tracking and successful interception by anti-ballistic missile systems than ITIS when several smaller incoming warheads are approaching. This strength in numbers advantage to lower yield warheads is further compounded by such warheads tending to move at higher incoming speeds, due to their smaller, more slender physics package size, assuming both nuclear weapon designs are the same, a design exception being the advanced W88.36. The second reason for this cluster bomb, or airing, 37 using repeated hits by accurate low-yield weapons, is that this tactic along with limiting the risk of failure.
also reduces individual bond yields, and therefore reduces the possibility of any serious collateral damage eaten on targeted nearby civilian areas, including that of neighboring countries. This concept was pioneered by Philip J. Dolan and others. Other phenomena. Mushroom cloud height depending on yield for ground bursts. Zero equals approx altitude at which a commercial aircraft operates. One equals Fagman, two equals Castle Bravo.